Hi everyone! It's been quite a while since my last video. Um, there's nothing much to say about that except family and work obligations and just general routine got in the way of me being as active on YouTube as I've wanted. But I finally feel like I have a little bit of free time, so I've decided to chat about the most recent book that I've read, which is Vladimir Nabokov's Speak Memory. For those of you not familiar with this author, I'll give a brief introduction. Nabokov, or Nabokov, depending on which side of the Atlantic you're on, was one of the preeminent writers of the 20th century. He was born in Russia, but wrote in both English and Russian, and his most famous works are written in English, including his most um, celebrated novel, Lolita. After emigrating to the United States, he became a professor of literature at Cornell, where he gave a series of lectures which have since been consolidated and published as books. And here they are. I picked up his autobiography, Speak Memory, mostly because I was interested in what made him a great author, apart from any contribution of inborn talent. Because this is an autobiography, um, I tried to parse the answer from Nabokov's own words. Unfortunately, I found that really hard to do, um, and that seems like it's by design. Nabokov strikes me as somebody who does not appreciate being analyzed, and I think it's part of why he has uh, such a distaste for psychology. He doesn't like to be dissected. Um, you know, I, I think he would just find it offensively reductionist. And his autobiography reflects that sentiment. It's written as a series of remembrances and observations, beautifully described, but in no way systematic. Um, at no point does he say, this is, you know, the element that formed me most as a writer. In terms of narrative, the book focuses primarily on his childhood and adolescence, and not that much time is allocated to his experience as an adult, and it actually ends abruptly when he immigrates to the United States. The chronology in the back of this Library of America edition, um, which was not written by Nabokov, I have actually found pretty helpful in filling in the details of his life. So using the chronology as a crutch, I try to narrow down a few elements which I think um, contributed to Nabokov's success as a writer, a process which I think he would hate on principle. The first is easy access to literature. Nabokov's family was Russian aristocracy and they had money. Um, they had a large country estate with many servants, plus another house in the city, they imported English clothes and food, they went on European vacations, and Nabokov had um, many tutors and governesses. His father also had a personal library of 10,000 volumes, and Nabokov himself said that it was his father's library, not his governesses, that taught him to appreciate authentic poetry. There is unfortunately not a lot in Speak Memory about this library, um, but I imagine Nabokov browsing it and taking book after book from its shelves. And in addition to this voluminous library, uh, his parents also bought him lots of children's books and magazines to which he refers to many times. He also had um, easy access to literature when he was a student at Cambridge University, but I think at that point his inclination towards writing and literature has already been formed. The second factor that I think contributed to his success as a writer was having a lot of unstructured free time as a child and adolescent. He would speak of long bike rides of five-hour-long butterfly hunting expeditions by himself, 
Um, and as a teenager, he would wander around his parents' estate, write poetry, and tryst with his lover, who inspired some of his early poetry. He writes that he was the favorite son, and you do get a sense that his parents were very permissive with him and indulged all of his interests. I mean, I can't imagine that he would be interested in writing poetry at a young age if his parents forced him to study law all hours of the day, for example. Another element I suspect contributed to Nabokov's talent is early learning of foreign languages. He had various English governesses and he learned how to read English before he ever learned how to read Russian. By three years old, his mother was reading English language fairy tales to him, and by four, he was independently reading children's magazines in English. He was also fluent in French. While multilingualism isn't rare by any means, I think that Nabokov's multilingualism contributed to his um, sensitivity towards language and in particular the process of translation, which he engaged in many times um, throughout his life, including for his own books, allowed him to see the advantages and limitations of one language over another. So that's my take um, based on speak memory of why Nabokov became, you know, the writer that he did but it's honestly hard to parse out the actual circumstances that led to his success. And I wouldn't necessarily pick up this book to learn how to do what he did, or to even get a thorough pictures of his life, because there's a lot omitted here. Um, but I did really enjoy this book for other reasons. I loved his commentary on art, on psychology on the writing process itself. Uh, I thought all of that was fantastic. And in addition, the book is just beautifully written. There are so many passages worth highlighting, but I just picked out one that I thought was particularly pretty. And this is when he's recalling um, the memory of his governess traveling in the snow with a sleigh. Very lovely, very lonesome, but what am I doing in this stereoscopic dreamland? How did I get here? Somehow the two sleighs have slipped away, leaving behind a passportless spy standing on the blue-white road in his New England snow boots and storm coat. The vibration in my ears is no longer their receding bells, but only my old blood singing. All is still, spellbound, enthralled by the moon, fancy's rear vision mare. The snow is real, though, and as I bend to it and scoop up a handful, sixty years crumble to glittering frost dust between my fingers. I mean, that's gorgeous. How can you not love that? Just appreciating it for the beauty's sake, which I'm sure Nabokov would approve of. Um, so that's a wrap for Speak Memory, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.